So when you use a GPS, and I'm talking more about a, a, a not your typical phone GPS, but a GPS that you'd go out in the field to measure with, measure with, um, there's a basic simple sequence that you go under. Um, there is software that will keep track of where the satellites are supposed to be at any given moment. You can actually predict what a good time would be to go out into the field to collect GPS signals because as it turns out, since all these uh, satellites are moving in space, um, sometimes are better than others. I mean, they're kind of like constellations and, and you know, like natural constellations. Uh, they're they're going to be oriented differently at different times of the day. And so ideally you want them spread across the sky, uh, but sometimes they're bunched up in one corner of the sky and that's not exactly a good time. But once you've determined when to go out, you can go out and you can collect your data, you can process it to improve its uh, uh, precision and accuracy, and then of course you can bring it into your computer, import it into a GIS for example, and then start to map with it or do other kinds of analysis. So the field planning that you do is again ideally to pick a time when the satellites are going to be um, arranged in a good constellation so they're nice and spread far apart so that you're going to get a better signal uh, and a better uh, um, trilateration result. Um, ideally again you want them spread out when they're bunched up it tends to increase the possibility for error to occur. Um, when you when you're out there in the field and you're going to collect your data, what's happening is that your GPS unit, whatever it might be, is collecting a couple pieces of information. It's getting both the almanac, which essentially is the listing of where the satellites should be at any given moment and, and the information about them, and then the ephemeris is another bit of information that they're transmitting that kind of makes corrections uh, to improve the precision of the location being determined because, again, that has to be constantly monitored. But once you once your GPS unit has been loaded with these, now it can begin to calculate uh, your position. And um, you can have real-time reading of your positions, or if you're collecting data, uh, what we, when you collect points about where you were at any given moment with the GPS unit, we call those waypoints. And waypoints are just points that you've recorded uh, with the GPS unit. And of course, with a modern GPS unit, you can record routes or features, routes just being, you know, um, paths along which you walked along all the time recording positions. Features means that your GPS system has, has the ability to not just record a location but also to uh, register what that is at that location and usually on a, on a nicer system you can actually type in say this you know this is a fire hydrant or this is a building of some sort and so that information is recorded in such a way that it can be loaded up later directly into a GIS system and, and work with. Now when using G GPS systems and they're not perfect, they are prone to error, and there's a number of possible errors that can occur with the GPS, uh, collecting GPS signals. Um, so signal multipath is a situation in which the radio signal coming from the satellites uh, essentially is deflected or bounces off or reflects off of solid surfaces like buildings, and so your unit gets an echo essentially on it, and that echo can confuse it, you can get slight errors in your in your position determination. Uh, more generally, um, you know, GPS uh, radio signals that come from the GPS satellites, um, they can't penetrate solid objects. So they, they don't travel through walls, for example. So if you are blocked, or rather your, your view of the sky is blocked in some way by solid objects, either a roof or a ceiling, or even a really thick canopy from trees, uh, the signal may be uh, weak to non-existent. Uh, so GPS does need to be able to see the sky in some way. If you can't see the sky, neither can your GPS unit usually. So it's like if you have the experience of having a GPS in your car and you drive through a tunnel, it's not going to be receiving signals while you're in the tunnel. right? And lastly, there's the geometry or shading. And this is, again, referring back to the, the constellation of the satellites. Their optimal constellation spreads them out so you get a better signal. And this is measured on a, on a GPS unit as a PDOP, uh, the position, let's see, precision dilution of position, sometimes referred to as GDAP, the geometric dilution of precision. Uh, in any case, it's just a measure of the uh, error that's being caused by the way that the satellites are arranged. And so on a, on a good unit, it'll actually list the PDOP, or it won't even allow you to collect a position until the PDOP is low enough so that that's not going to present a problem. Um, the ways that we can correct for all these possible errors are, are many actually. Um, the nice one is this WAS system that essentially has a network of ground-based GPS units where the position is very precisely known and it's constantly monitoring to see when the, the calculated 
position that comes from the GPS satellites is slightly off from what you know it should be. And so that slight difference between what you know the position should be and what you're getting from the satellite is the correction. And you can uh, tell, you can, uh, excuse me, broadcast that correction either by sending the signal back up to the satellite so that can be retransmitted to let people know, hey, there's a slight error going on. Or it could even be done on the ground, um, say with the DGPS system, where you have um, radio transmitters organized around the country that kind of constantly emitting that. So if you have a good GPS that has the ability to receive either the WAS system where you're getting this other signal from the satellites or a DGPS system that's receiving the radio signals from ground-based stations, the correction can be made in real time and you get even a better precision lock on, on, the, on what you've collected or what you're getting on the ground. If you don't have that, a more common and older system is this course system this continuously operating reference station system. And it's essentially this huge network across uh, North America. And again, there are ground-based GPS units. Basically, they're sitting on a point that's been very carefully surveyed, and we know exactly where that position is. So imagine you, you put the GPS unit down, it's sitting on this known position, and it, but at the same time, it's receiving the signals from the GPS satellites, and it's calculating the uh, position that the, that the satellites are telling it. Uh, but at moments, that calculated position will deviate from what you know it should be. And again, the deviation between the calculated position and what you know it should be is the correction. So what happens is when you are out in the field and you're using the GPS unit and you're collecting your waypoints, and then you go back to the office and upload them to your computer, you can then get on the internet and connect with the nearest uh, core station and download the corrections for that day and hour that you were out there and then the corrections can be made um, after the fact. And it's called post-processing. Uh, and this is a common way to do it. It's kind of a cheaper way, an older way, but it's, it's just as reliable. But it takes a little time because you have to do it back in, back in the office. So the post-processing happens after the fact, and it uses the information from those base stations, the GPS units that were sitting on known locations, and then you can apply it to the data you collected in your roving, or re uh, roving receiver, which is a GPS unit that you were working with. And then once you have that corrected, either done dynamically in the field or done post-processing, you can upload these coordinates to a GPS, or excuse me, a GIS system, and you can plot them out and you can work with them. Um, now, of course, this uh, quick uh, discussion about post-processing and WAS and all this other stuff is kind of a reference to a, a, a standard GPS unit that is meant specifically for that purpose. But the reality is that we work with a lot of other devices that have that and of course the most common one is our our cell phones now our smartphones in particular are often enabled with, with uh, GPS capabilities um, the interesting thing about smartphones is that they have a variety of ways of figuring out their location so if it has GPS built in then that means that it's essentially it is receiving radio signals from the satellites that are orbiting the earth in space um, but even if you don't have GPS specifically enabled on the phone the position of a phone can actually be determined in a variety of other ways. So for example, the cell phone towers that are transmitting to your phone, which is a way that you make phone calls, a way that it communicates with the network, themselves can be used as part of a way to figure out where you are. And that can be done either through a process of trilateration or through a process of triangulation. So for example, for triangulation, um, that we can know, for example, which cell towers your phone is communicating with at any given moment. And just like the example that I used in the very beginning talking about the ship trying to figure out where it is from the shore, um, if the cell phone towers represent the known positions, then you calculate the angles between those known positions of the cell towers and calculate that back to the phone. Similarly, trilateration can measure the time delay it takes for the signal from a given cell tower to arrive at your phone. So in a way, the cell towers themselves act as if they're kind of like the GPS satellites. So uh, it means that there's a lot of really interesting ways, and, and this can be extended in all kinds of ways. In fact, in some buildings, uh, this, this goes even further to use uh, what are called this Wi-Fi systems for positioning. So the same kind of technology, essentially, that you use to connect to the internet wirelessly when you're in a building can also be used just like a GPS system. You can figure out where you are, again, by triangulation or by trilateration, figuring out the angles of signals or the time delay and the time that they arrive. Um, and that's great because it really en en enables um, 
the po a lot of possibilities for using the technology for navigation from anywhere from being out in the ocean to just being in a building. Um, there's a lot of concerns about um, privacy, and that's something worth talking about, although that's a larger discussion at this point. Uh, but one other area that's kind of interesting also is the issue of safety. And so ever since since 2005, actually, the, t the federal government has required that all uh, cell phone uh, companies, um, the one, excuse me, cellular networks, uh, reveal the locations of cell phones during emergency situations within uh, a matter of seconds, and that they can also pinpoint a location within a few hundred meters of the true location. And again, given that there's so many different ways to do that, it doesn't seem like such a stretch to do that. But that's an important thing just to be aware of, is that when you have a cell phone, even if you disable the GPS broadcasting, which you can do in the settings, you're still under law, have to be locatable when you dial 911, for example, uh, and are re requesting service because they need to be able to find out where you are. So there you are, position determination since uh, ancient times to the present.